Hey guys, Gross here. In this video, I'm going to talk about some less common color map games that I think are fantastic. These aren't the super famous games that everyone already knows about. I'm not covering stuff like Prince of Persia or Crystal Quest. Nah, I wanted to provide a little more value than that in this video. So I picked out some lesser known but really fun early color games that run on some very low system requirements. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. First up today, this is Solarian 2, a very challenging space shooter from the late 80s. This was one of the very first color games for the Macintosh. It's a Space Invaders type of game where you control the ship at the bottom of the screen and you have to shoot all of the aliens up top before they shoot you. The gameplay in this game is surprisingly fun for how basic the game is. The enemies will form different shapes up top, with some enemies firing projectiles at you while others will swoop down at you. This is a very difficult game that requires some strategy when taking out the bad guys. You want to take out the most dangerous guys first, then move on to the easier ones. Now the sound effects in this game are absolutely bonkers, and one of the main reasons this game is so memorable. The sounds totally do not fit well here. A water drop for shooting, people laughing when you collect a power up. These sounds are quite mix matched, and that is why I absolutely love them. For being such an early game, the system requirements are a little strange on this one. It requires 640 by 480 resolution with at least 256 colors. Ideally, you'd want these early color games to support a resolution of 512 by 384, which was a very common resolution among early color Macs. Systems like the Color Classic and the popular Macintosh 12-inch RGB display could only do 512 by 384. So the 640 by 480 resolution meant it locked out a ton of Macs, especially since it's playable on systems with as low as an 020 processor. As far as I can tell, with the tiny sprites in this game, it would have worked perfectly in that slightly lower resolution. It's a shame, but if you have a color Mac with 640 by 480, I highly recommend this game. Next up, I have a game kind of in the same Space Invaders style as the last one. This is Slime Invaders 2.0 by Ingemar Regnemalm. The black and white version of this game was a pretty well-known classic on the Mac, but this later color version is very cool too. It was pretty much the same game as the original, but here it's in color and it got a resolution bump to 512 by 384 which the author said was to add support for the 12-inch RGB display, which was a popular monitor to use with the Macintosh LC line of computers. The gameplay here is so much fun. You control the ship at the bottom of the screen using the mouse, and you gotta blast away all the enemies coming down to invade your space. Every once in a while you'll have to deal with these skull-looking guys who are invulnerable to your normal shots, but you do have a more powerful secondary weapon called the Cod Shot where you launch a big ol' fish out of your cannon. If you hit the skull with that, it'll push them back up to the top of the screen. There are eight different types of invaders in this game, where the higher up in the waves you get, the faster the enemies will poop on you. After a few waves, more enemies start to join in and the slimes start shooting at challenging angles and it really starts to get difficult. This game is a classic and I really like this color version. Check it out if you enjoy these types of games. Next, I want to show you this little game simply titled Pac-Man. Now the Mac was blessed with an abundance of great Pac-Man clones, but most of them would put their own little spin on the game so it wouldn't infringe on copyrights. This game I'm showing you here is different, as it's intended to be more of a one-to-one -one copy of the classic arcade. I don't know much about this particular version other than it was released back in 1991 and copyrighted by MT, which I can only assume are the author's initials. Probably doesn't matter anyways because this is totally Namco's property. Also a guess here, but I'm assuming this was a Japanese release. Or the author was Japanese, because the ghost characters in this game used their original Japanese names instead of the cute Blinky, Inky, Pinky, and Clyde names we got here. Overall, this version is very well put together. It handles nice, it's got great sound effects, and the graphics look very well made. Kind of like an HD version of the original game. This one has cutscenes as well, which you don't always see in Pac-Man clones. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get very far in this one, as the difficulty ramps up much steeper than you would expect. Just a few screens deep into the game, it gets very challenging. Unfortunately, this one has that 640x480 screen resolution requirement, where the game refuses to launch without it, even though it would probably work perfectly well in that slightly lower res. If you're good at Pac-Man, I would totally recommend checking out this game. It'll give you a good challenge. 
The next game I have for you is another Pac-Man clone. This one's called Blaze. And in Blaze, you play the role of a water droplet who goes around a stage collecting pellets, and instead of power pellets, here you collect fire hydrants. I would describe the gameplay of this one as very smooth. It feels very responsive, and the frame rate is very steady on real hardware. Here I'm playing it on a Macintosh 2 variant of the Mini VMAC emulator, and it's still a pretty good experience. Not as smooth as real hardware, but definitely playable. I love the graphics and sound effects in this game. They are very cartoony and welcoming. It's your classic Pac-Man gameplay with a cute spin on it. As far as compatibility, this game only requires an O20 and thankfully works at 512 by 384 or higher resolution. In my opinion, this one has stood the test of time. It's still a very fun game. The last game I have for you today is called Tristan, a very early pinball game released by a company called Little Wing back in 1991 for both Mac and DOS computers. This was one of the first computer pinball games ever and featured very realistic physics for its time. This game was created by a couple of pinball fans and they stressed that the aim of developing this game was to get the physics of the pinball table right. It's hard to believe that this one was from back in 1991. This game won awards such as the Software Publisher Association's Best Simulation of 1991 and Macworld's Game Hall of Fame 1992. Another cool thing about this game is that it came packaged with a real pinball as a freebie, or some people call them a feely. But apparently that caused the plastic in the case to break and people returned the game because it was all busted when they got it. They switched out the ball with a real pinball flipper in the later releases. There's only a single table in this game, which this game came out so early there wasn't really a standard at that point. But it is understandable, as I said it was just a couple of guys who made this. They focused on one single table and they did it right. In fact, people loved it so much that a few guys even put together a real life Tristan mini pinball machine. Little Wing has a video of the homemade Tristan table on their website. I think this was back in the 2000s and man it looks cool. The author has kept this game updated over the years. It started out as a 68K game requiring a mere 020 processor and 256 colors. There was a release for the Macintosh LC line which supported 512 by 384 and the main release supported 640 by 480. It then moved to PowerPC and then later iOS and OS X. In my opinion, the OS X version is the ultimate version. As of recording this video, it is still available in the Mac App Store for three bucks. And yes, it still works just fine with Rosetta 2 on Apple Silicon. I love this version of the game. Tristan has been kept alive and supported by its developers for over 30 years now. That is impressive. Check it out if you enjoy pinball games. Well, I hope I've shown you something in this video that you've never seen before. I had a lot of fun making this one. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button to let me know. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Goodbye.